Hello everyone and welcome to our supplementary discussions on General Physics 1. So this is the book that I'm, I used to make these videos and um, personally I would like to add uh, on at this segment Ang ganda na libro na to. This book is really good. They, they wrote this really well. It has pictures, it has color, it has a lot of examples and, and, and uh, exercises. You guys should be appreciating this book kasi maganda talaga siya. Yeah, so that's my personal opinion lang. And take it with a grain of salt if you like. But try it out guys. Try it out. Please try to read your book. It's really well made. Alright. Uh, for lesson 1, lesson 1 is uh, very easy, easy naman siya, introduction lang siya, so you could read it on your own, and, but pretty much ang summary lang ng lesson 1 is this saying right here, W. Edwards Deming said, in God we trust, all others must bring data. This saying just says na we only have faith in God, pero everyone else, they have to have measurements, they have to, they have to show numbers. Meron dapat silang evidence for what they say and that is the importance of measurements and uh, especially with physics physics uh, especially in physics I grab it there's this is this is a field that tries to explain everything that is it really it's it wants to to ex, to have an explanation for everything they really measure a lot of things in physics and uh, so yun yan now let's proceed. Ah, so ngayon, if you're measurement, if you're doing measurements, it's really unavoidable. There's going to be uncertainty because with every data there's uncertainty. Okay. Now let's define what an error is and it's also in the book. An error is a deviation from the true value. So meron kang mini measure na value if uh, if you measured it a little bit wrong, yung yung little bit wrong na yun, that's the error. Suppose we're trying to measure the height of a sardine can and its true height is 8 cm. So, imagine yun na 8 cm yun ah, yung Lego sardines can. Actually, I think I really measured it, it's 8 cm. But anyway, imagine yun rin that there are 3 people, for some reason, they're really clumsy, they're not good, they're not good measurers. They got 7.5 cm, 7.7, .7, and 8.9. So, obviously, mali talaga kasi it's 8 cm, right? Well, actually, it's look at this it's six but anyway the error is the difference between the true height the true height which is eight centimeters and eto measurements na to. That, that is the error the difference between these okay there's this number line right here right yeah and so it's a number line 7 cm 8 cm this is the true height for example lang. suppose lang, suppose and this 9 cm person number one got 7.5 person number two 7.7 .7. person three 8.9 this 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 space here that's the error that little bit that little bit there that deviation that's the error okay so i hope that's clear and just rewind the video if it's not clear <laughs> now what is accuracy and precision accuracy is the closeness to the true value there is minimal error if if it is accurate there is minimal error that's what it means to be accurate and precision closeness to the other observations so to be precise to be precise means that your measurements magkakalapit lang they are all the, your measurements are all close to each other so closeness to the other observations you you have measurement one two three all those measurements are close to each other that's precision okay to explain this further we have these diagrams now, diagram number one low accuracy low precision it is low precision because eh, all these hits they're not close to each other and layo they're far apart low accuracy because when you take the average of these shots they don't go near the the bull's eye so that's why it's low accuracy how about this one low accuracy and high precision high precision because eh, they're all close to each other low accuracy because if you take the average of these it's really far from the bull's eye how about this one? High accuracy and low precision. Low precision because they deviated from each other, these, uh, these hits. But high accuracy because if you take the average, they come close to the bullseye. 
high accuracy, high precision. Obviously, they're all close to each other and they hit the bullseye. So, high accuracy. Now, imagine in, uh, an, in, ex in an experiment, this is what, uh, <laughs> uh, this is not ideal, by the way. I hope that this does not happen when you do your experiments. Imagine that we have a laboratory and this is what's happening. We have an observer doing an experiment and that's the experiment design and so many other things are happening. What are random and systematic errors? What is the difference? Systematic errors first. These are errors. Systematic errors. Huh? Systematic errors. These are errors coming from the observer. For example, if the observer is... Uh, Malabo ang mata, like me, I wear glasses. Maybe there's an error there because he can't see the data accurately. So, meron, there's going to be an error there. Number two, the instruments. Maybe the instruments are not uh, are not calibrated properly. Maybe itong an hourglass. An hourglass does not really time perfectly as much as a timer on your cell phone or your, on your smartphones or on a watch or on a clock. So there, there are errors coming there, or maybe this uh, this instrument is ano uh, low power na pala yung kanyang battery. It's it's running on low battery, so yung kanyang laser is not performing perfectly. So mayro error don. Number three, the design of the experiment. This one, the design of the experiment, the documents involved in this in this whole experiment. If dun palang sa plan, mayro ng malay. If there's an already an error in the plan, there's an error in the experiment. So it's important the experiment design. So what are random errors? Pretty much easily defined, uncontrollable errors from the environment that can affect an experiment. So this is an example of a random error. It's an uncontrollable. It's nasusunog na. It's it's burning. What can you do? So maybe it it affects the experiment. How about this guy taking a sel uh, a selfie? It might affect the experiment because this is a laser, this is a light, and this is also emitting light. Maybe it will affect the experiment. How about this one? There's a meteorite coming to the to to, to destroy the whole laboratory. Uh, uncontrollable error, talaga, and it's going to destroy your experiment and pretty much destroy the whole laboratory and everyone inside. So that's a random error, uncontrollable errors, yeah. How about this? Uh, this is at the near end on your on your book on lesson 1.2 percent error and percent difference as we said before we must bring data okay you have to have numbers to back up your observations your assertions you need numbers so yung, you can't just say oh itong experiment ko accurate to oh, itong experiments namin precise to we can't just take your word for it. We need numbers. Okay. And that is why you calculate the percent error and the percent difference. Etong percent error, that's usually for accuracy. Why is it for accuracy? Because this equation here, yung x, this is the measured value. Ito yung value that, uh, that was made by the student or the, the scientist. Yan yung kanyang kinalkulate yan yung kanyang measure with a ruler a microscope or any something and x true yan yung true value so yung measured value minus the true value so you get the absolute value so it should be just positive so measured value minus the true value divided by the true value you will get a decimal here times 100% and you get the percentage of how much your measured value deviated from the true value that's the percent error it gives you just how much percent your measured value deviates from the true value how about percent difference if this is for accuracy this is usually for precision why is that because if you look at this x sub 1 minus x sub 2 ibig sabihin lang yan measurement 1 minus measurement 2 take the absolute value so if you subtract the values if you remember, the result of a subtraction operation in mathematics, that's called a difference. Ooh, percent difference. Dun siguro galing yun, di ba? So, the difference, the difference between measurement 1 and 2 divided by the, the average of measurement 1 and 2. Di ba? Di ba? Measurement 1 plus measurement 2 divided by 2, that's just the average. 
So, the difference divided by the average times 100%, it gives you the difference between the two, the percent difference. If it's just asking you, what is the difference between measurement 1 and 2, ito lang yun. But if it's asking you the percent difference, ito yun. Alright? So, yan po yung dalawang equation on the, the end portion. This is for accuracy and this is for precision. So, that's the end of this video. I hope mayroon kayo natutunan and it's, uh, it's nagsimula pa lang naman na inyong classes. And I, once again, once again, I am recommending this book. It's a really good book, General Physics 1, that uh, CFA has given you. Or actually, if you're not with CFA, you're just watching the video. Hey, yo! Uh, salamat for watching. I, I recommend this book. It's really good. Okay. And that is the end of the presentation. See you on the next one.